Welcome to part four in the training series, OBI EE for end users. As the training sessions migrate from consuming data to creating content, i.e. reports and dashboards, you should start noticing how simple it is to create your own reports in Oracle BI. By using Measure It Analytics pre-built reporting for Oracle eBusiness Suite, any company that owns Oracle EBS and needs reporting or to replace Oracle Discover can easily create reporting and analytics with this solution with little to no IT involvement. If you watched the first three parts in this series, you should be familiar with navigating Oracle BI by now, as well as creating your own reports. In part four of the series, we're going to teach you how to create your own dashboards and use the assorted functionality within the dashboard framework. In this training, we are going to use the My Dashboard area to create your dashboard. To do this, navigate to Dashboards and then select on My Dashboard. In Oracle BI, the My Dashboard, as it's called, is meant specifically for each user as their own playground for creating dashboards and testing things out. When you first come into it, as we just did, it is definitely blank, as you can see. So to get started, click on the Click Here icon in the middle of the screen to begin editing this dashboard page. Now let's just take a quick rundown of the different components of this dashboard builder. The dashboard toolbar allows you to perform tasks such as adding or deleting pages, previewing, saving, and so on. The Dashboard Objects pane has items that are used only in dashboards. Those objects include columns, sections, etc. The Catalog pane includes items that you or someone else has saved to the catalog, i.e. reports, that are available to put onto this dashboard. The page layout on the right-hand side of the screen is the workspace that holds all of your objects, which will be displayed in the dashboard once you have created and saved. All right, so let's just jump right into creating our dashboard. And as we go along, we will explain the pieces that we are touching. The first thing we want to do is add a column to our dashboard. Columns are used to align content within a dashboard. And you can have as many columns on a dashboard as you need. To add a column to the dashboard, simply drag the word column from the dashboard objects pane to the right and drop it onto your workspace. Next, we need to add a section within the column. Dashboard sections have a little bit more functionality than the columns do, as we'll show you later. To add a section, simply drag and drop the word section into your layout. Next, we will edit the properties of the section object to add a few features. First, let's check off the collapsible option, as I don't want users to be able to hide this section in the dashboard. Click on Properties again, and this time we'll choose the Rename option. This section will hold the prompts we're going to create for the dashboard, so rename it to Dashboard Prompts and click OK. Next, let's add another column area below the first one that we've created. This time we'll drag it below the Column 1 section that's already there. We need to add another section to store the report that we're going to put on the dashboard. But in this case, instead of adding the section, let's just drag and drop the report and the section will be added automatically. To add a report to your dashboard, navigate to the Catalog section of the dashboard screen and find your report within the Catalog folders. In our case, it's under the Training Reports folder. Once you find your report, just drag it into the Column 2 area of the dashboard pane. Notice how when you drag a report into the dashboard column area, it creates the section for you. Now let's save our dashboard by clicking on the Save icon in the right-hand side of the screen. Then click on the Run icon to check your dashboard out. If you had joined us for the third lesson in this series, this report should look familiar. Let's take a quick look at the other views in the View Selector of this report. So far our dashboard is pretty blank, so let's go to the Dashboard Properties and start spicing this up a little bit. First we need to get this dashboard back into edit mode, so click the Dashboard Properties and click Edit Dashboard. Next, click on the Settings icon and choose Dashboard Properties. Then click on the pencil icon next to the Dashboard Report links. In this dialog, we can toggle what features we want active at the bottom of a dashboard page. In this case, let's check all of these on. Next, let's check off the Show in Briefing Book option, as we don't use that one too often. 
This dashboard currently has one page and it's called page one, which is a bit boring. So let's click on the row where page one exists and then click on the rename icon to give it a more descriptive name. Enter the new name and click OK. And that should do it for some of the most commonly used dashboard properties. Go ahead and click OK on this screen. To add more pages to the dashboard, use the add or delete page icons at the top of the screen. Let's add page 2 and just leave it blank for now. There's your blank page. Don't forget to save your work. After saving, let's run the report to see what a two-page dashboard looks like. Running will default to the page you are editing, which was page 2 in this case, so let's click the tabs at the top of the dashboard to get back to our first page, which is AP Payment Analysis. Currently what we have, I wouldn't really call a dashboard, I would call it a report in a dashboard, because it doesn't do anything other than what a normal report would do. So what we need to add next is the concept of a dashboard prompt, which adds flexibility to a consumer using this report. To do that, Let's start by clicking on New and then selecting Dashboard Prompt. Similar to creating a report, when you create a dashboard prompt, you need to let Oracle BI know which subject area you want to grab prompting columns from. In this case, let's choose EBS R12 Accounts Payable, as that's where our report came from. Now, dashboard prompts are created a little bit different than a report, although they do use the same columns from the presentation layer. One thing that is very similar is before you start creating a prompt, just like creating a report, have what you want to do in mind. In this case, for the prompt columns, we want to prompt this dashboard by the operating unit, a time dimension, and the supplier field. Click on the green plus arrow at the top of the screen to add a column to your prompt. There are three types of prompts. We will be using the column prompt at the top. The other two options, variable prompt and image prompt, are used less than 1% of the time. Once you choose a column prompt, this dialog box appears with the subject area that we chose earlier. In this case, let's open the folder for operating unit and select the operating unit column. Since prompts are made for input rather than output, they have some different options than if you were creating a report. To see all of the settings, let's click on the triangle next to the options link and the second half of this screen will appear. Use the select boxes to turn features on and off. In this case, let's include all column values as an option in our dropdown, so check the box right next to it. Next, let's add some default values to this prompt. Click the arrow next to the default selection and then choose specific values. Then click the arrow to get the search box to select your specific operating units to default. This is the same field search box used throughout Oracle BI. So let's default to any operating unit that begins with the word vision. So type vision in the starts section and then click on the search. Use the double arrows to include all of these values and then click OK. Now we'll add the remaining prompts for the time dimension, year, quarter, and the supplier name. When we get to the prompt for quarter, we're going to do something a little additional. Since we've already have year in there, we want to limit the quarters based on a selected year value. So here we'll check the limit values by option, and then we will choose year. So you only get the quarters for a year which you have selected. This is a great feature to leverage when there are multiple prompts that have something in common, and you don't want users to see every value in the list of values. Let's add the last prompt for supplier name. Next, let's format the prompt a little bit by using the new columns area on the right hand side of the screen. Checking the new column box is similar to a horizontal page break. Notice when we check the box for year, it moves year to the next column of the prompt. Check the same box for the supplier name field. 
and then let's go to the bottom half of the screen and edit the display settings. This will adjust where the apply and reset buttons appear on the prompt. The default is to place the buttons below the prompts and let's change that to place them beside the prompt. These settings create a nice horizontal prompt that will take up as little room as possible at the top of our dashboard. Now save the prompt in the same training reports folder. Now that our prompt is saved, we need to do a couple more things. We need to add it to the dashboard, and we also need to make sure that the reports on the dashboard are listening for these prompted values. Let's go and do that piece first. Navigate to the catalog to the training reports folder and edit the AP payments report. Currently, this report has hard-coded prompts in it. We are going to change these prompts so they are listening to a dashboard by making the prompts on is prompted value, which you'll see in a second, and we'll be sure to add is prompted filters for the other columns that are in the dashboard prompt. Let's begin by editing the year prompt. To make the prompt listen in a dashboard, change the operator from a hard-coded value, like is equal to is in, in this case, to the is prompted value. To do this, click on the drop-down box and select is prompted. Do the same for operating unit. Now we need to add new prompted filters for both quarter and supplier name. Save the report. Just a quick word of caution, when you're creating reports that are to be consumed in a dashboard, notice there are no prompts in this report, so if you run it here, it will run wide open. It's best to go back to the dashboard and test the report out there, leveraging the prompts that are pre-built. Let's navigate back to the My Dashboard. If you notice, we still haven't added our prompt to the dashboard page, so you can see that our report has run wide open and has pulled back data for all of the quarters in this environment. Let's edit this dashboard and add the prompt. Then save and run the dashboard. That looks a lot better. You can see our prompts at the top of the dashboard and you can also see the report has rerun based on the default prompts that we had set because this report is listening for the values that are in the prompted area. Now our dashboard consumers can play around with the different features that we enabled in this report, including page items and view selectors. Users can also modify the dashboard prompts to run this same report for different filtered criteria. the prompt to just two of the operating units. Let's see how that looks. Remember to click apply after updating dashboard prompt values. This is where the filters view comes in handy in a report that's on a dashboard. They're very helpful to test that your filters are being applied correctly from your newly created dashboard prompts. Watch as I play around with the dashboard prompts a little bit. What's awesome about this is we have one report and we can see it in a multitude of ways with just a few simple clicks. Thanks for joining us for this OBIE training session on creating dashboards. We hope you will also tune in to part five in this series where we'll teach you how to report data directly in Excel from Oracle BI 
using the SmartView add-in for Microsoft Excel.